Coming up on Locked On Dodgers, Clayton Kershaw makes an announcement and speaks about Justin Turner. No Syndergaard's officially introduced to the Dodgers media and had some comments. And another reason why the Dodgers are getting these players, J.D. Martinez, uh, we find out why he picked the Dodgers. That's what's on tap, so make sure to keep it Locked On Dodgers. You are Locked On Dodgers. Your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Yo, 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 Dodger fans. Welcome to Locked On Dodgers. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, the number one local sports daily podcast network. Locked On, your team every day. This is a daily podcast covering the Los Angeles Dodgers, bringing you the smart fans perspective on our boys in blue. You can find us wherever you find podcasts and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked On Dodgers. Subscribe in both of those places and you'll get it straight to you every day, every Monday through Friday, because we never miss a day and you can either if you are subscribed. So make sure to do that. If this is your first time listening or watching. I'm Vince Samperio, usually joined by co-host Jeff Snyder, uh, but he covered for me yesterday, so I'm covering for him today. And we're both lifelong Dodger fans that have spent time covering the team, continue to cover the team currently. And uh, one of the ways we cover this team is doing this podcast every Monday through Friday where we bring the smart fans perspective on our boys in blue. And that's uh, what I'm here to do. Not not too much analysis today, more so a little bit newsy uh, in the sense that we actually got some news and thoughts and comments from Clayton Kershaw, Noah Syndergaard, and a little note on J.D. Martinez. So, yeah, let's just start off with we'll, – we'll, we'll start off with Clayton Kershaw. Clayton Kershaw announced uh, that he – or I don't know if he announced or if they announced beforehand. Either way, uh, Clayton Kershaw is going to pitch for Team USA in the World Baseball Classic. He had mentioned it back at the beginning of December how, you know, he thought it would be a, a – I don't remember the exact wording, but basically a, an honor to, to pitch for Team USA – and he wasn't quite sure yet, and now we know for sure that he's going to be pitching for Team USA. It's interesting in the fact that you know Clayton Kershaw hasn't always been the healthiest guy, especially recent years. He's always missed at least a little bit of time uh, with back injuries or arm or whatever the case is. But when you think about it, there's the there's the opening round in Phoenix in earlier March. And then if the assuming USA advances, they should, uh, then it'll be the finals semis in the finals in Miami in mid March. And I don't think it's that big a deal. Realistically, he's going to pitch twice at most. He'll pitch one time in the opening round and one time in the semis or finals, if that's the case. So, I don't really see it as too big a deal. He's going to pitch in spring training anyways. Obviously, the environment pitching in the World Baseball Classic and pitching in spring training is a little bit different. Uh, you know, you're, you're more ramped up. You are, you know, more adrenaline pumping. It feels more like an actual game rather than you working on your pitches. But if there's anyone that can do it, Clayton Kershaw and his regimen and routine and the way he takes care of his body, you know, that would be the guy would trust to do it. And, you know, he wants to represent Team USA, and, and that's a good thing for him. Uh, one part on Team USA, you know, they've had a lot of guys announced already, and, and their offense is pretty stacked. They haven't necessarily gotten the strongest pitching. Um, you know, Clayton Kershaw for sure climbs to the top of, of the pitchers that they have, especially starting pitchers that they have. And, yeah, so it, it'll be fun. Like I said, they, they are – USA is the defending champions. They got an even stronger team back than they did the first time when they won it. So salute to Kershaw. You know, hopefully on our end nothing bad happens, which, like I said, I don't think so. He, at the most, he'll pitch twice, and that's not even guaranteed to be twice. It'll be at least one time probably in the opening rounds and then the semis and finals. It's just a matter of who else they have and what other arms are available um, you know, it depends if they hand Kershaw the bar or not. So, Shalutz Kershaw play, playing for Team USA. He also was on MLB Network with Lana Rizzo talking about you know some of the recent signings and players that are leaving. And uh, Clayton Kershaw said Justin Turner signing with the Red Sox and Cody Bellinger joining the Cubs is going to be weird because of the continuity the Dodgers have had recently. 
And then Kershaw went on to talk a lot about Justin Turner, and I'll just leave some quotes here. Quote, JT is such a cornerstone of the franchise and has meant so much to me personally and everything that he has done on and off the field. I texted him. He always gave me the thought we were going to win the game. You see him, his mannerism and demeanor every day. You go to the ballpark thinking you're going to win the game when you see him. That's a compliment I can't give to everybody. We're going to miss him. I'm going to miss him. It's going to be so weird to not have him in the clubhouse. I hope he has fun in Boston, just not too much fun. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we – We've fans have been, you know, going through it with Justin Turner leaving and, and you know, rightfully so, but it's a matter of, yeah, the players do too, you know, Clayton Kershaw, Justin Turner at this point, I would imagine they're good friends. So that's another part, you know, when your good friends is leaving a uh, guy that you've, you know, gone, gone to quote unquote battle with, you know, as they say that you've been on the field with, you've gone through, you know, a lot of postseason ups and downs, You've gone through everything pretty much together. Those guys are, you know, Justin Turner's been around since almost the beginning, 2014, of when this run started. You know, Kershaw, Kershaw's seen these guys. Kershaw's been the guy that's stuck around, and he's seen, you know, Chuck Peterson and, you know, Kike and and Kelly Jansen and all these guys head out, and, and Kershaw's still the one standing here. So, you know, I guess just kind of my thoughts on Justin Turner, too, is, you know, yeah, it, it's – it's you know double edged. Uh, am I gonna miss Justin Turner on the field the way you know he can produce nowadays? Maybe not as much. Yeah, he was he had that really 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 hot stretch where he was one of the best hitters. Um, you know, probably what from like May on or whatever it was last year. But he struggles with velocity, and what you face in the postseason is velocity, and he struggled a lot the last two years in the postseason. So you know. On a analytical level, or a, you know, a non non emotional level, you can understand, and you can you know more easily say, okay, yeah, it was time for Justin Turner to go, probably. But on the emotional level, and you know, human level, yeah, we're gonna miss Justin Turner. I mean, even now, he's been posting the last couple of days. Uh, you know, all his work with the Dream Center and him in court have been doing the like 12 days of Christmas stuff where they're, you know, doing some kind of fundraising or something every day leading up until Christmas. And you know, you're going to miss that part. You're just going to miss Justin Turner in general. You know, like he was at this point, he's one of those guys where you have a lot of memories, especially recently, and a lot of postseason memories. And a lot of them are connected to Justin Turner. So, you know, congrats to him for, you know, getting that money and, 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 you know, getting Boston to give him that money. It didn't work out for the Dodgers. I think for the Dodgers on field product, this is probably, you know, the best way for it to go or, you know, the not ideal, I guess, but this was the next step in the process. And, you know, we've lost a lot of these guys and it, we've gotten over it, you know, Kike and Jock and, you know, Justin's going to be a little bit different, but it's a matter of, I don't know, you, you get past it and not in a bad way, just, you know, it happens. Players, there's player turnover in baseball these days. And that's why I think another reason we got to appreciate Kershaw so much and hopefully he never decides, oh, the team in Texas is a better option because that would suck. But, yeah, salute to JT. Uh, we'll miss him, but we'll always have those memories and that's all we can, you know, stay with. So, Gonna get into Noah Syndergaard, who talked to the media and had some interesting, fun, cool comments about the Dodgers and why he decided to choose the Dodgers. That's what's on tap, so make sure to keep it locked on Dodgers. BetOnline.net is who brings you today's episode. BetOnline is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From pro football to college bowl season to basketball, we got it all at betonline.net. And if they love sports podcasts, they got that there as well. So head to Bet Online on your laptop or mobile device to see all the action, learn more, and they're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. So Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, back at it. And I said, no, Syndergaard. Spoke to the media for the first time, uh, was on a Zoom call with Dodgers beat writers and, you know, just talked about why he chose the Dodgers 
why he took less guaranteed money to come over here and kind of what he's been doing to get back to himself. And we'll start off with, with kind of why he chose the Dodgers. The big quote that was out there was, quote, I feel like everything that they touch turns to gold. Uh, he went on and said, when you think of the Los Angeles Dodgers, it has its, it has this aura around it where the expectations are super high and you're just expected to go out there and perform to the highest level. What they did with Heaney last year and Tyler Anderson, I definitely want to be in that category. There's some we talked about before of, you know, the word Jeff talked about is, yeah, you know, players want to come here for either getting their career back on track or believing in the Dodgers, you know, team that they'll find something or they'll be able to, you know, they'll have a plan for a pitcher or a player in order to get them back on track or in order to make them elite again, or in order just to make them overall better. And that's the theme of what we've seen with the Dodgers in recent years of you always hear when we talk to guys and we've talked to Tommy Canely before, and, and you've heard other guys say it, you know, the Dodgers had a plan or the Dodgers brought me a plan. And, you know, that's been their best free agent pitch for the most part. If it's not money, uh, it's been, you know, we have a plan for you to be better or to do better or to, you know, improve yourself or to get back to where you were. And I think that's the biggest thing is I'm sure the Dodgers presented Noah Syndergaard with the plan of what they think can help him, how they can get him back to it. And, you know, the proof is in the pudding. Andrew Heaney got, you know, a decent amount of money. Uh, Tyler Anderson parlayed it into a three-year deal. We've seen other guys, you know, turn their success here into deals. You know, even, I mean, Chris Martin success and it wasn't necessarily because of the Dodgers. He got here midway through the season, uh, but he was really good with the Dodgers, better than he was with the Cubs. So there might be something there. You know, Tommy Canely, the Dodgers allowed him to rehab with them. He came back and, uh, you know, he was still good and, and he was able to do that too, but you know, for, for a guy like Syndergaard, I mean, he probably had some two-year $20 million deals or two-year $25 million deals, something like that. And, you know, why take on that? Why take that on if you can come to the Dodgers and, you know, get a little bit less money in this first year, but hopefully parlay that into a, a multi-year deal after that. And, you know, he's still relatively young, uh, you know, especially for a pitcher, it, especially the way pitchers got, pitchers got paid this offseason. Now, you know, a lot would have to happen for him to, you know, get a ridiculous deal after this season. But, you know, he's only 30 years old and, and he'll be 31 next year when he's a free agent again. And, uh, you know, a good year with the Dodgers, he could parlay that into a two, three, maybe four year deal. And that's what he's looking for. Um, one way he can do that is by trying to get some of velocity back, which is also something he talked about. And he talked about how last year, uh, he, he couldn't figure out why his fastball died. He said that he was touching 98 in some bullpen sessions earlier in the year. He had a little setback uh, early in the year, and then his velocity kind of went away after that. He said he's not sure why. He said he maybe his body went into fight or flight mode to protect his arm after the setback, uh, you know, maybe lay off after the rehab, whatever, you know, whatever the case. But he said that he heard – People told him that he maybe was a little bit too bulky coming out of it, and he wasn't able to – to after the surgery, and maybe that had something to do with it. So he said he changed how he trained to basically take the mound into the weight room. Uh, all this being said, like we talked about, even if the Dodgers get what Syndergaard was last year, which was a guy who threw 134 innings of league average you know, level, that's something the Dodgers take. No Syndergaard is going to be their fourth or fifth starter. That's something you take out of your fourth or fifth starter is, you know, league average for multiple or, you know, a lot of innings or a, a good amount of innings. So, um, but yeah, here's some more quotes from Syndergaard just on him trying to figure it out last year. He said, quote, kind of like trying to change the tires on a car while it's still moving. It was just a percentage point off and that makes a world of a difference. To the pitches I threw last year, I just want to throw those away. I fully intend on being a different pitcher next year. I see no excuse as to why I can't get back to 100 miles an hour and even farther than that. Just doesn't make any sense. So what has Noah Syndergaard been doing in order to try to get back to that? And, yeah, he did expand on that. 
He has been to Tread Athletics in Charlotte, North Carolina, to start a throwing program. That's a you know pitching factory that's been working with players the last few years. He's been to Driveline in Arizona. Uh, you know we all know Driveline. They've worked with some guys and helped some guys get velocity back up, and you know that's hopefully what he can do. And then after the holidays, he'll be working at Dodger Stadium, working with the staff, uh, and seeing you know what they got for him. So. He's determined to get back to where he was velocity wise and, you know, obviously pitching wise. So this just seems like an overall combination of good for the Dodgers, you know, assuming it can go right. You know, if last year was his floor, then that's perfect for a number four or five starter. Not so much perfect for Noah Syndergaard as he wouldn't necessarily parlay that into a multi-year, more lucrative deal, but good for the Dodgers. But if he's already going to all these was already going to all these places on his own in order to regain his velocity and you know whatever else he's looking for on this pitching journey, you add the Dodgers on top of that and their pitching staff and the facilities and everything else that they have, you get more excited about Noah Syndergaard. And and, and I was already kind of excited just for the fact of Noah Syndergaard's on the Dodgers. You know, it seems like. Almost any player, not any player, but it seems like a lot of my favorite players uh, recent years have found their way to the Dodgers. Now, you know, before he was here, Manny Machado, big fan of his. Dodgers got him. Was a you know fan of Trey Turner when, especially when the Dodgers faced him, and he was very scary at the top of that lineup. Dodgers got him. Uh, you know, Max Scherzer was always fun to watch. Dodgers got him. And, you know, all that part is fun. Uh, and that's what comes with no Syndergaard. But like I said, if he was already on the journey to self-improvement, now he has the Dodgers behind him and, you know, their, like I said, facilities, their thoughts, their plans, their ideas. We could get a nasty Noah Syndergaard back that throws 100 miles an hour with the, you know, nasty slider and hammer curveball. And if that's the case, then, yeah, the Dodgers get another bargain. Even if he, you know, he doesn't need to get back to throwing 100 miles an hour to be effective. We, he was effective last year at the velocity he was throwing. But even if he splits the difference, last year he was averaging 94. He wants to throw 100. Split that difference and he gets to 97. If he can somewhat consistently throw 97 and, you know, can still have all his pitches last year, I feel like he had to learn how to pitch a little bit more. And that's just going to benefit the Dodgers, and I'm excited to see that happen. And, yeah, it's it's going to be fun, and it's interesting, and, you know, that's that's what happens. Kershaw also kind of spoke on on this part of, you know, the Dodgers and, and everything else. So Kershaw said the Dodgers, quote, the Dodgers always see stuff, so I'm sure he's got some type of analytical, analytical number, some type of something that they feel like he can get his velo back up to where it was and he can do this or that. We're excited to have him, and we need him, quite frankly. Yeah, Dodgers do need him uh, because they did need a starter, and we can only hope that that's what happens. So shout-out to Noah Syndergaard. Um, I guess one thing, I, I guess he wasn't originally listed as number 34 when they first put him on the Dodgers website. He won't be wearing number 34. He's probably going to wear number 43. Nobody's worn 34 since Fernando Valenzuela. So that's, I don't know if they told him that or, you know, whatever the case, but won't be wearing that. Uh, got one last thing, J.D. Martinez and the player the Dodgers missed out on. And we'll finish up this episode. Thank you for making Locked on Dodgers your first listen of the day every day. Check out Locked on Sports today for the biggest sports stories in the world in 20 minutes or less with instant reactions, game recaps, and Locked on's take of the day. Locked on Sports Today, available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. All right, so Ken Rosenthal put out an article, and the title is Why J.D. Martinez Took Less from the Dodgers uh, and Laid Us on the Market. But the Dodgers weren't really mentioned in anything else in there. And starts off with the comparison of Justin Turner and J.D. Martinez. And, you know, Jeff, Jeff talked about how similar the numbers were last year. And, you know, Justin Turner essentially got two years, 22 mil, but basically one year, 15 mil with an opt-out. J.D. Martinez got one year, 10 mil. J. 
J.D. Martinez, who was an all-star last year and had a pretty solid year, even with the struggles he had in the second half. Um, you know, yeah, he's a little bit older, but he got less money than Josh Bell, Michael Brantley, who was hurt last year, Joey Gallo, who was not that great last year. Uh, and why? Well, it's because of the Dodgers. And Scott Boris, who is J.D. Martinez's agent, said, quote, Andrew Friedman and Mookie were like college coaches seeking the big recruit. J.D. was fully aware of the recent signings and took six to seven million dollars below his value. He wanted to win and he wanted to optimize his ability. He felt the Dodgers were the best team to help him achieve those goals. He made them fully aware he has every intention to play well and seek his true value in the seasons ahead. So again, a guy who comes to the Dodgers, takes less money in order to read invent rediscover you know help himself out in terms of getting back to the guy he was also wanted to win and the Dodgers benefit this year now if Noah Syndergaard and JD Martinez both come out rediscover themselves and you know are really really good again the Dodgers might not or won't want to pay them what they were going to want after the season but hey for the 2023 season there's nothing better than having guys on contract seasons. Noah Syndergaard, contract season. J.D. Martinez, contract season. So, you know, this these, despite how the rest of the offseason went and how we feel and everything else, you know, to get guys that are hungry, that want to prove themselves, that want to get those multi-year deals after this year, you know, that's sometimes in itself – not better than better talent, but it's a nice little motivation. And it's not like these guys aren't talented. Noah Syndergaard, J.D. Martinez, both former All-Stars, both you know, guys that were some of the top 5, 10, 15 players at their respective positions before. And J.D. Martinez, like I said, last year was an All-Star, had a very strong first half, struggled a little in July and August. But then in September, October, the last 26 games of the season, he had an OPS around 900 with five home runs. And in 26 games, you know, you spread out 26 games, you round it up to 30 games, and you get to about, you know, that's five home runs, 30 games into 162. That's around 25, 30 home runs, you know, up and down for inflation or whatever. So he was still good. And I don't know. I, I Yeah, I had some of his peripherals and some of his other numbers, uh, have gone down. He's been in decline for multiple years now, but to be in decline and to still be an above average league hitter and to get less than a guy like Joey Gallo, who you're more potential than actual production, uh, is interesting. And, and, you know, Andrew Friedman kind of does it again. I mean, he got these, he got him for less than, like I said, Joey Gallo. He got, Noah Syndergaard for a million more than Mike Clevenger signed, and Mike Clevenger wasn't good at all for the Padres last year. So, yeah, I mean, that that's fun. Uh, it's exciting, and, and it's one of those where you don't see it as much in baseball, um, maybe now a little bit more. Uh, but, you know, like in basketball or even football, when there's a team that's really good or some of these super teams they make and – you see all the veterans come play for like league minimum or the vet minimum or, you know, take less money than they would have got playing somewhere else because they want to win. You know, that's partly of why these guys come to the Dodgers. The other part is, you know, they feel like they can get better of the Dodgers coaching staff and, and athletic staff can, can get them back to where they were or, you know, being playing at their full potential. So it's fun to be a Dodge fan and, if the Dodgers can become a fact, you know, the Dodgers are already a factory of if they need to spend money or want to spend money, they can't. They've been a factory of being able to supplement that talent with minor league talent or talent that comes up, you know, through their farm system. And if they can add this, you know, re recovery factory or whatever you want to call it of these guys that come and sign one year deals because they want to rebuild their value and get, you know, get paid. It's going to help the Dodgers in the long run. Now, you know, one, are they, could they potentially face one of these guys that they help rebuild and 
uh, in a potential postseason series one day. Yeah, that's very possible, but they're not thinking about that. They're thinking about the year at hand. And the year at hand, they're getting two players for very cheap that could end up both being all-star talents or at least all-star level talents. And if not, they're even if they – regress to their floor or not regress, but even if they stay out their floor, if JD Martinez gives us the season he had last year, if Noah Syndergaard gives us the season they had last year, they help this team right now. And anything more than that is just, you know, gravy. So yeah, it's exciting. Uh, gets me excited more for the season of like, all right, these guys are, are you know, they want to be good. And not that, not that other players don't want to be good. You know, not that Joey Gallo didn't want to hit last season, not that, you know, Cody Bellinger didn't want to hit last season. You know, that's not always, you know, not that Chris Taylor wanted to strike out 40% of the time last year. But, you know, these guys are motivated, and and there's nothing wrong with a little bit of extra motivation. So uh, last part, the Dodgers were linked to Seth Lugo a lot recently as a guy. It seemed more like a swingman type. They wanted to build him up to be a starter, but also, you know, have that back op- – have that option – of having him as a reliever still if it didn't work out. And uh, Seth Lugo signing with the Padres. And it seems like he's signing with the Padres because they maybe told him he could. he's for sure going to be a starter. That's what some of the reports seem like, that he's going to get the chance to start over there. And, um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't a crazy amount of money. So, you know, not sure if the Padres said, hey, we'll guarantee you a starting spot. And the Dodgers didn't necessarily do that. Whatever the case, you know, I don't know. Uh, But yeah, Seth Lugo, it's not a huge deal. I don't necessarily see him becoming this all-world starter. Uh, It's not like, and the the Dodgers aren't, I mean, not the Dodgers, the Padres aren't necessarily known for making pitchers, like, better. No one. You don't ever think of, oh, yeah, he's going to go to the Padres and he's going to get so much better. You don't necessarily think about that. Uh, Seth Lugo is 33 years old. He hasn't been a starter since 2017. He's made starts in years since then. He made seven starts in 2020. He made five starts in 2018. Um, But, I mean, in 2020, he started seven games and he finished six games. So he was more of a reliever, definitely. Um, and yeah, the last two years hasn't started any games. So it was more of a project than anything. You know, uh, does he have the stuff to be able to go through the lineup two, three times? I don't know. Um, we're going to find out definitely. And it's just one of those where, yeah, he's cool. I mean, I remember his, his off speed stuff was pretty nasty. He had a lot of spin. I would have preferred him as a reliever. I don't think he has the stuff to make, you know, make it legitimately as a starter, unless it's like a borderline number five. Uh, he would have been perfect in the swingman role for the Dodgers, but didn't quite work out that way. What does this mean for the Dodgers? I don't think it means too much. I don't think they're necessarily looking for another starter. He would have been perfect because he, you know, would have filled a swingman type role. Um, and honestly, I think at this point, between Andre Jackson and Pepio or Michael Grove, one of those guys could fill in that swingman type role. Some of them make some starts, make some long relief appearances, and you know, kind of have consistent action going. You know, if they need a six man rotation one time through because they have like you know twelve games in a row, whatever the case is, okay, you know, swingman, you're the six man. And if they have where they have a bunch of days off or random days off, you know, multiple times. All right, uh, we need you to go finish this game. We're the sixth inning. We need you to throw the seventh, eighth, and ninth. You know, whatever the case is. So it happens. Dodgers miss out on players sometimes. I don't think this one's going to hurt them too much. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I don't know what we're. I would assume they're still going to be an outfielder, maybe a shortstop acquired here uh, before pitchers and catchers report. But uh, pitching wise, I think the Dodgers are good. They might. Might throw some flyers or maybe some minor league deals to some of those relievers if they don't end up signing and see what happens. But I think the Dodgers are, are little, not set on pitching, but I don't think they're going to be actively pursuing anybody specific. So that's all for today's episode. Thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen of the day. Check out Locked On 
Sports Today with Peter Bukowski bringing you the biggest stories from around the sports world in 20 minutes. Get the analysis and opinions before anyone else with our local and national experts and insiders. Available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. If you just look for Locked On Sports Today, that's how you can find us on YouTube wherever you get podcasts. If you search for Locked On Dodgers, thank you all for listening. We really appreciate it. Uh, you know, numbers have been pretty solid, especially through this offseason. That's been not as fruitful for the Dodgers. So we appreciate you guys being here, sticking around with us and, uh, you know, making us your first listen of the day or, or her whatever listen of the day, but we'll take it. If you're not listening every single day, try to add a couple of days to your week. You know, we are here every Monday through Friday. You know, why, why miss a day? Or, or if you do miss a day, why not catch up? There's not a lot that it's not like during the season where if you miss an episode and we talk about it, it's going to be about a game that was in the past. Most of this stuff is still pretty relevant, you know, unless guys sign. So, um, you can find us on social media, Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Dodgers. Jeff is on Twitter at Snydog. I'm at Vince Amperio. DMs are open on all those accounts if you need to get a hold of us. You can also get a hold of us via email, lockdowndodgers at gmail.com or via voicemail text at 323-863-5625. We're every weekday morning and we hope you'll be with us when you get in your car or if you're at home. Tell your my device play podcast, Lockdown Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree, you just have to listen. Have a good one.